Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to revisit a topic that I chatted about a little bit before, which is Linux on the smartphone, and in this case, specifically, why Linux on the smartphone is important. So, the, um, the reason why I decided to make this video is I came across a news article on the Hong Kong protests. So uh, this video is being recorded in October of 2019. I think it's the 10th today. Yeah, 10th of October. And as of this time, there are currently protests going on in Hong Kong, uh, where Hong Kong is, um, yeah, not even gonna get into the politics of it. You can, you can check it out yourself. And this is really not sort of specific to the Hong Kong prote protests either. I think it's just a good example of, of this. Anyway, the impetus to make this video is a article that I came across regarding the protests currently going on in Hong Kong and the fact that Apple has apparently removed an application that <clears throat> the protesters were using uh, from the App Store. And uh, this application apparently tracked the movements of uh, police, and uh, they were using that to um, you know, avoid uh, the police. So this is the right decision for Apple to make. <clears throat> It might not be the, the moral decision that you think that they should make, but it's the right decision that they should make as a corporation. Because as a corporation, they are required legally to maximize shareholder value. And in terms of maximizing shareholder value, it is significantly better for Apple as a corporation to bow to pressure from the Chinese government to remove that application and maintain the marketplace in mainland China versus removing that and angering the government and then having them potentially uh, no longer be able to sell uh, iPhones and Apple products in mainland China. So that's, um, that's kind of where things are, are at right now. And the, uh, the topic that I'm, I'm revisiting is the idea of Linux on the smartphone and specifically in this context, why it's important. Now, I do want to give the caveat that there are other different variants that you can go ahead and use. So uh, open source Android, for example, um, I don't believe that, that Google has removed um, uh, sort of an equivalent app. At least I haven't heard anything about it from their, their, um, their store. However, I do think that it would be logical for them to do that. I do think that from a business perspective, that's probably the right thing to do. So <clears throat> the, um, the idea is that we talked about Librem before, uh, Librem 5 smartphone, that it is uh, Linux based. It has a um, sort of customized UI and it's, it's you know still pretty early days in terms of of the product um but you know it's a it's a seven dollar seven hundred dollar phone and it has a lot of privacy aspects to it so it was designed specifically uh to be a device that is privacy focused and one of the use cases that they have for the phone is using this device in hostile environments so perhaps you are a reporter uh, or a dissident in a country where the government is going to try to track the the phone. So it's sort of secure by default. Um, it has the ability to go ahead and turn off um, individual components like the wireless radio, um, like you know uh, the, the the cameras, microphones. You, there's physical switches that you can toggle on and off to disconnect them physically from the um, uh, the, the 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 board, the PCB that this is you know, the chip is on. And being Linux, one of the big things that's 
incredibly useful about this is uh, I'm sure that there will be some kind of app store, but there's also going to be, being that it's Linux, the ability to go ahead and compile software from source uh, or just to go to a website, um, download some binaries, and assuming that you're comfortable, you know, accepting the, um, you know, the, the, the certificates on them or if they've been signed, you know, you can just do, you know, an apt install uh, or an RPM install. I'm not sure if this is a, a Debian-based uh, or a Red Hat base. I think they're Debian based because their their desktop version of Linux is Debian based. It's based on Ubuntu. Um, but that's that that would this would be a non issue um, if they were using a uh, phone like this. Additionally, because this is Linux based and it's open, and I think basically Librem's model is that they're making money on the hardware. Is is the sort of the, the idea. And then there's potentially going to be some additional services you can sign up for if you would like to. Um, their business model is aligned in such a way that it wouldn't be sort of a requirement for them to go ahead and do something like remove that uh, from their app store if they had an app store. Um, additionally, they're, they're, from my understanding, a social purpose corporation. So a social purpose corporation is allowed to do things that would not maximize shareholder value if it aligns with their specific purpose. Um, so in this case, the social purpose is uh, advancing Linux and privacy rights. So, you know, uh, I'm not saying to go buy one. I have not yet tried one, uh, but from my experience running um, Ubuntu Touch on my Nexus 4, um, I think it's very viable. And... Um, from what I've seen of videos from the dev kit, it seems pretty interesting. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm sort of up in the air on whether I'm not, whether I'm going to go buy one or if I'm going to hold off to, uh, you know, version two. Uh, but I definitely at some point will have a Linux phone in my pocket because that just seems like a good thing to, to, to do. And, um, you know, it may be this, it may be some other kind of open source, could be Sailfish, could be one, you know, one of those things. I think it's probably going to be uh, either a Librem fa phone or a, um, a Pine phone, which is sort of a competitor that's um, as very similar um, kind of kind of product. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that was an interesting thing and thought I'd give a little update on uh, on that. Um, additionally, the other thing that sort of brings us into relevance uh, in terms of the news is that the um, this is a little bit dated. This was from September twenty fourth, so it's uh, you know a little while, a couple of weeks ago, um, Librem announced that they are going to actually be shipping the first uh, Librem 5 smartphones. And they look pretty snazzy. This apparently is the the, the final version that's coming out the uh, the production line. So, um, yeah, it reminds me of the original iPhone a little bit. And I think, it's, um, I think it looks pretty good. So... Yeah, it's something that you could potentially go ahead and get. So if you're interested in it, you know, I get no commission or anything like that, but feel free to check out their their website and, um, you know, consider grabbing that. Um, I don't think that anybody, hopefully in most countries, are going to need to take advantage of the privacy features in terms of, you know, privacy from the, the government and things like that. Um, but I don't think it hurts anyone to take those measures anyway. Um, Certainly, at least not in the, the sort of the, the level that we're seeing in, you know, in Hong Kong. But by purchasing a phone like that and having Purism be able to make some profit, it does go a decent way to ensuring that they are going to continue to make those products. And... As we can see, even if it's not something that you need right now, I do think there is a definite important use case for it, like the folks over in Hong Kong or, you know, maybe somebody in Syria or different parts of the world that are a lot more dodgy. So, you know, if you're looking looking for a new phone, if you're in the market for one anyway, you know, maybe consider consider checking it out. Um, I, you know, obviously wait till it's in people's hands. And they, um, you know, you can go see some YouTube videos of people actually using it. 
but I think it's pretty close now. And I know that I was watching a video recently where they have uh, Android emulation and it's like, it's like that far away. Uh, it's basically just, uh, they need to go uh, recompile a few different libraries, but it looks like they're on the very, very edge of getting that working and being, uh, being fairly seamless. So if they can get that going, all of a sudden you can go run Android applications on top of this. Um, I think that would be a really nice stopgap until you know the the native applications are there for some other things, or even in some circumstances where maybe you've got a you know a banking app that's made by your bank, and they're just never going to support something like Linux. Whereas you can go use you know the the HTML5 web client for Facebook or, or things like that. So um, so it can be a, a good stopgap for folks who are in that position. So yeah. Let me know down below if you think you might be getting a Librem 5 or if you have some other kind of device that you prefer. Um, I'm very curious about this. I think it's going to be something I use in the not too distant future, but uh, probably in the future. So have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video and take care of yourself.